Today I'm gonna to share with you my CIA story. I've had a lot of people ask me about this, so I'm gonna tell you the good, the bad, and the ugly. My name is Jason Hansen. I'm a former CIA officer, and I was born and raised just a few miles outside of Washington, D.C. in Northern Virginia. And growing up in Northern Virginia, or NOVA, for the, for the Northern Virginia guys watching this, is pretty much every government agency is in your backyard. So there's the CIA, there's the DIA, there's the NSA, the NRO, there's the FBI, the Secret Service, and on and on and on. So growing up, I'm an Eagle Scout, I was in Boy Scouts, always love Boy Scouts, always love running around. And then of course my friends and I many times got in trouble for shooting BB guns at each other. We weren't wearing eye protection because we were young and dumb kids. So I always love that kind of stuff. And when I was in college, I didn't want a traditional job. I didn't, you know, I didn't want something where, hey, I'm gonna be sitting behind a desk pushing papers for the next 40 years of my life. Now, I wish I could say that from the Day one, from the age of four, I was 100% onto the CIA, but that would not be the truth. When I was in college, I said, hey, you know, maybe I want to work for the Secret Service, or maybe I want to work for the CIA, or maybe I want to work for, be a police officer. There was all these different things. I didn't 100% know what I wanted to do, as most college kids don't. But I knew I wanted to serve my country one way or the other. I'm very, very patriotic, so that is absolutely one of the reasons I joined the CIA. I also went to multiple military recruiters, and for whatever reason, and just didn't feel that was the path I was supposed to go down. And obviously I ended up with the agency, so it all worked out the way it was supposed to work out. So in college, when I'm gonna graduate soon and I need a real job and be a responsible adult and all that, I started sending out applications to numerous police departments, numerous government agencies. And as I was about to graduate, a local police department in Virginia offered me a job. I didn't have any other job offers. I was graduating college. Um, one of the things I did want to be was a police officer. And so I accepted that job at the local police department. Well, very shortly thereafter, I ended up getting calls from both the CIA and the Secret Service. And I started going down both these roads. And these roads involve a mountain of paperwork. Obviously, they background check you. You're filling out a ton of stuff. Uh, they're going to check, you know, hey, where's the last 10 places you live? They're going to interview your friends. Then are going to interview your families. You've got to get polygraphed. You've got to have medical exams. You've got to meet with a psychologist to make sure you're not out of your mind. However, I'm pretty sure a lot of people slip through that crack somehow. So anyway, I was going through both of these paths with both the agency and the Secret Service. When you're going through these paths, they always tell you, hey, you're, you know, you're probably not going to make it. It's a very, uh, obviously, a lot of applicants. People fall out all the time. They get disqualified for various reasons all the time. So, you know, me, you may never hear back from us. I was very lucky. After going through these processes, pretty much the same exact week, I want to say it was just days apart, so totally miraculous, totally very blessed on my part, is the CIA and the Secret Service offered me a job. After praying about it, after talking to friends and family, I felt the agency would be a better path. I thought it would be more exciting, and that is the route or route, depending on where you live, that I decided to take. So I ended up joining the agency in 2003. I was 23 years old, so I was very young, very lucky, and I'd gone through the process of, again, medical exams, of the polygraphs, of all that kind of stuff, and I made it. And I'm not gonna go into some specific details, but of course there's an orientation, then you end up going to the super ninja secret squirrel facility of the farm, and you get a lot of training, and you're very blessed. I will tell you, when I was accepted to the CIA, again, age 23, and I went there. I wanted it so badly, and this is for all the young people listening or pass this on to the young people listening. I promised myself that if, when I was going to the farm, because obviously people can fail out of the training, not everybody makes it, I said the only way I am not completing this is if they take me out in a body bag. And I was 100% serious. So whatever you do in life, young kids, you've got to be 100% committed. Now, I'm married. I've got a wife and six kids. So, you know, not as intense in that way, meaning I'm not going to just die for anything that's not truly important. But age 23, I was that hardcore. Because when you go to the farm with your class, there's obviously a variety of people. There's men, there's women. Uh, I went some with some guys who are, you know, tough, strong, uh, former college football player guys. And let me tell you, as you probably already know, it has nothing to do with strength, has nothing to do with size. It is all about mental toughness. So I saw some super tough big guys who were crying over things. And I saw some four feet tall women who were tough as nails, who were handling it fine, not crying. So that was my way of going into it. I'm not the fastest guy in the world. I'm not the strongest guy in the world. Clearly looking at me, I'm not the toughest guy in the world. But I have mental toughness and I, over and over, when days got tough in training, the only reason I'm not going to graduate and be able to make it into the agency is if they take me out in a body bag. So join at 23. And let me tell you, when you come as a 23-year-old young man, 
obviously you are not the most mature person in the world. So when you come out of the farm, when you've had this awesome training, you think you're the baddest son of a gun alive. So you're walking around and you're thinking, I hope somebody tries to pick a fight with me. You're going out with your fellow agency officers to a restaurant or whatever, and you're like, yeah, I hope somebody tries something in this bar because you think you are the baddest man alive. Luckily, I'm no longer 23 years old. I'm a bit wiser and I have zero desire for a fight. I have a zero desire for violence these days, but I still train and I still train based on my stuff that I learned in the agency. So I know if heaven forbid that happens, I will be able to take care of myself. So I don't go looking for it. I will absolutely try to avoid it, but I know how to deal with it and handle it if I can't avoid it, if I can't escape that situation. So I think that's an important thing that everybody should have is don't go looking for the fight, but if it finds you and you can't get away, you've got to know how to deal with that threat. I digress. So I joined the agency at 23. Wonderful place to work. It is great. They treat you well. I had some amazing mentors. I was incredibly blessed to learn some guys who had done some amazing things at the agency. And I stayed there until age 30. So I was there from 23 to 30. And people always ask me, hey, Jason, why did you leave the agency? Well, there was a, a few reasons. And none of them were bad. None of them was because like they treated me bad or hey, we were doing bad things. That's all Hollywood myths, all Hollywood stuff. The men and women of the agency do amazing work. They do work that most people are never going to know about, but also most people don't have the courage to do or don't have the guts to do. So I 100% support and love the men and women of the agency because of the valuable work they're doing. But the reason I left is I had these great mentors and some of these mentors who had been there 30 years or plus, they were divorced. They had horrible relationships with their wife. If they were married, um, they had horrible relationships with their kids because obviously you spend a lot of time away. And so when I was 30 years old, I was not married. I didn't have any kids. I'd been there for seven years, as I just mentioned. And I was kind of at that point where I saw my life. Hey, do I want to spend 30 years with the agency and do this where maybe I'm never going to get married, never have kids and end up like one of these mentors, even though they're amazing men, they have no real family life. Or do I want to leave the agency now, do something different and get married and have kids? So that is why I left the agency is, and again, I pray about everything. It's not an easy decision. I will tell you that when I left the agency, my mom died of cancer many years ago. So she was not alive when I left the agency. But I, I wrote up my resignation letter. I printed it off and I told my father, because my dad and I used to have a Sunday dinner anytime we could. And I said, hey, dad, you know, I've decided to leave the agency. And let me tell you, he was not thrilled about it. He for he didn't say he doesn't cuss, but he basically called me the world's biggest idiot and said this is a stupid decision. He said, hey, you've got your top secret security clearance and you have the golden ticket, meaning you work for the CIA and you have your top secret security clearance. So you can pretty much go anywhere and do anything you want. And I understand that as a parent, I do have six kids now. So I ended up getting married. I've got six kids. It all worked out. And I 100% understand if your kid came to you, have this great job, or you're in a recession and said, hey, I'm leaving the agency and I'm not exactly 100% sure what I'm going to do and how it's going to work out, but I feel it's the right thing for me. So my dad called me a knucklehead. He was not able to talk me out of it. He actually went to his best friend and said, hey, try and chalk Jason out of this. So I met with his best friend, great guy too. And he was like, hey, you know, you don't, besides the agency stuff, you really don't, you've only worked for the government. You're not going to be able to do much else. So don't leave the agency. But nobody else was able to talk me out of it. I remember going in that day, turning my resignation. It was very nerve wracking for me. So I ended up leaving when I was 30. When I left, I love the stuff. I love personal protection. I love teaching people in self-defense and firearms and all that kind of stuff. Protection is my passion. So that's what I was going to do. And I ended up doing corporate work. It was almost like corporations are sneaking me in the back door saying, hey, we have these big problems. We need you to fix them. You can't tell anybody. And I did that for a while, but I don't really love working with corporations because too many lawyers involved, too much just, you know, bureaucracy, no nothing ever gets done fast. And I had, I was doing a lot of this and I had a buddy tell me, hey, there's this show Shark Tank. And I wasn't very familiar with it, but I kind of knew of it. And he said, hey, you go on the show and it would expose you to the masses. You could do a lot more training of civilians. And remember, when you leave the agency, it has been embedded in your mind to keep a low status. So for instance, I'd be going jogging and I'd see some uh, trash bag or bag in the road, I immediately go the other way because I would be afraid it was a suspect package. So I was still very much about keeping a low profile, you know, not telling people when I go on a date still, I'm not telling people, oh yeah, hey, I was, I'm former agency or hey, yeah, I just, you know, I just left the CIA. And, you know, I wasn't saying any of that minus the corporate work because obviously they needed to know my background and do that. I was keeping a very low profile. But I had a guy who was a friend slash mentor of mine and he said to me, he said, hey, Jason, are you good at what you do? I said, yes. He said, are you teaching or can you teach 
teach people valuable skills in personal protection, whether that is self-defense training, whether that's home defense stuff. Like, do you know how to do this and can you do it? I said, yes. And he said, well, if you don't get yourself out there, nobody's gonna know about this valuable stuff you share and it's not gonna help anybody. So I realize it's hard for you because in real life, I'm an introvert. I like, you know, I like the CIA, meaning don't draw attention to yourself, all that. But he basically said to me, nobody's gonna know you exist. You're not gonna be able to help anybody if you don't get out there and start telling the world who you are, what you do, and the skills that you can teach them. So he convinced me to go on Shark Tank. I went on Shark Tank. I was very blessed that I got a deal with Damon John, who's a great guy, very down to earth. And kind of the rest is history. So I went on Shark Tank, a bunch of people started calling me, and now we do a ton of training and a variety of things. We've got 320 acres out in Utah called Spy Ranch, where we do escape and evasion training, pistol, rifle, evasive driving. I do a lot of private consulting work. I've got a bunch of private clients, so billionaires, presidential candidates, uh, celebrities call me up when they need help for anything and everything, whether it's, hey, I want you to do a home security audit, or hey, I want you to teach me hand-to-hand -hand self-defense because I'm worried about some whack job because I'm a celebrity. So I'm incredibly blessed now to do a lot of that, all kinds of training, and we've kind of got, if it's security or survival related, personal protection related, I've got a wonderful team. We're doing it in one aspect or another, and I've got a a lot of former CIA buddies who now work for me and we're doing awesome work. So that is kind of my story in a nutshell. I'm sure there's probably something I didn't answer, something you have questions about. So please comment below, please let me know. I'll try and uh, answer them or I'll do another video on it. I will tell you, if you know someone who wants to work for the agency, I'm gonna tell you the secret of how to do it. So I get a lot of younger kids who say, hey Jason, my dream is to work at the CIA too. How do I do it? Well, you can obviously go online and apply for the agency, that is one way. But I'm gonna tell you a super, super secret way that is another way to do it. Because the agency gets thousands, tens of thousands of applications every single year. It's obviously very hard to get a, a job with the agency. And I'm gonna tell you, we've all seen the movie The Recruit and how they recruit you. Well, guess what? 99% of us apply to the agency. They only recruit a very small portion. So unless you have contacts in Iran or you're from Iran and you speak 17 languages and you're the world's smartest person, they're probably not going to recruit you. You're probably going to have to apply like I did, like 99% of people did. So when you apply, you can go straight through the agency. That's one way, as I just mentioned, but they get so many applications. Another thing you can do is get your top secret security clearance any way you can. Because when you have your top secret security clearance, TSSCI, let's see if I can remember it all, secure compartmentalized information with Lifestyle Poly, which is what we had. If you can get that, then you can do a lateral move to the agency. So there's a ton of other intelligence agencies out there that offer top secret security clearances. So you can get a job with the NGA or the NRO or the NSA, or the DIA, or other agencies. Once you have that top secret security clearance for them, it is a heck of a lot easier to attempt to do a lateral move to the agency because you've already had that TSSCI clearance they want. Hope that covers a lot of things. I'm out of breath. I'm actually gonna go do some shooting today because that's what I wanna do. I love shooting and uh, all that stuff. But like I said, if I forgot something about the agency, make sure and uh, let me know. I'll try and answer it. Also, please like, subscribe, turn on that ring notification. And click below if you want to hear more stories about my agency stuff. You can get my New York Times bestselling book called Spy Secrets Can Save Your Life. I am Jason Hansen. I love this country. I believe in we should all be prepared and self-reliant. So I hope you take care of yourself. I hope you take care of your family. And let me know how I can help you.